How many shows did you do a week? Uh, three. Really? Yeah. That's great. I know. Three shows a week? I don't know any difference. It's my first job. What did you do the rest of the time? I'm a solo. <laughs> <laughs> Edison, musical theatre legend hmm? is the name of your new show. No, not is it not? as a legend. Oh, no. is it not? It's singing songs of musical theatre legends. By a musical theatre legend. Oh, stop. But tell me about this new cabaret. So it's on the 4th of March? 4th of March at 7.30 at The Space. And basically, I just want to... I just want to share, like, musical theatre and, and, like kickstart this year and doing something that really scares me actually it really scares me and i've been putting it off for years to like try and do a cabaret on my own but i just thought you know what 2019 bang what can people expect i'm working with uh, a guy called ben papworth and we're gonna change some musical theater legends kind of songs and like create it maybe in my version you know and and see what happens and are you gonna remember all your words well, hopefully, but you know what I'm like. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be singing anything to Bow Hell? Yes. You I are. Am. Good. Yes. Do you feel you yeah, have to do that now to kind of keep everyone no, happy? No, I don't feel I have to, but it's a massive part of my yeah. my life, and it's something which is partly the reason why I'm doing this kind of gig because it's given me the confidence and the people that I've I've met who were so loyal to me and so welcoming to me when I first joined the car, I joined in August. So what was it like to go to that show? Because that was a huge, huge show. I watched it in July, not knowing that I was even going to audition for it. I knew I really wanted to be in it. Did you? But it kind of scared me a lot because the vocals on that show is it's incredible. I took over a guy called Patrick Sullivan. When you're going into a show, it's quite daunting when that, that person's so great. It was just so lovely to come into a show where um, Everyone was so talented, and yeah, and I, I really enjoyed myself, and I learned a lot. I grew a lot as well. Yeah. Um, because I. Now this is my thing. I'm I'm being very honest, but I think that's what I want to be. I want to be truthful, and and I started off that year being in not a very good mindset. You know, I was in a very bad headspace, and um, which I've put on my social media. I've sh I've shared that I've I've had like a lot of anxieties and things about performing, and I stopped for a while. And um, this was kind of stepping into the fire for me going into the show, and uh, it forced me into the into the fire as such, and made me kind of go, "No, you can either crumble right now, or you can run with this." And I, I ran. I chose to run, and it, 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 that's why I'm saying that I want to sing the songs in the cabaret because it's a massive part of my life. It's really stepped me up mentally, you know, and, and made me think that there's nothing to lose by even going wrong you know there's nothing to lose you just try it and and work from it and work from it and work from it you know and just keep going and yeah is that something that kind of manifested started when you were at college no i think it, it it comes from just me who i am you know and for a long long time until really this year and last year the late end of last year if there was nothing I could touch, if there was nothing I could kind of see, it's like, it's not real. But then in your mind is something you can't touch and you can't see, so you neglect it. Well, I neglected it anyway. And I was like, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna care about it. I'm just gonna, I feel bad and I feel really anxious about this, this side of things. And, uh, oh, people think this, people think that. And um, I kind of, let it build up and build up and build up until I would get into a really stressful situation of going into my first West End show or or playing a part that I, I needed some confidence for, you know, and, and then the demons would creep in after a while when you're at your lowest point or your busiest point and they would try and mess with your mind and um, it was the time to kind of shoot them off a little bit and, uh, and realise that this is the most important thing beyond anything else this that you have to train the most and I think colleges are now with the whole kind of I feel over the past maybe couple of years mental health has really grown yeah. uh, and you can point your toes as much as you like but if this isn't trained then it's it, you're 
you're not going to be a very happy person, and that's for anyone in life. If you're going into university studying English literature, or if you're going to to a college to learn performing arts, you need to make sure that you're healthy in your mind, so you have a grounded place to branch out. That's and also, you did a season on Anthem of the Seas. Yes, I did. Yeah, it's my first job out of college. And yeah. how was that? Did that impact your mental health? Being mm. away from family, you were so young, obviously, and going straight into a job like that. It was a real eye opener for me because I went in. Uh, I did. We were rock you up on it, and uh, I was kind of very much thrown in at the deep end as such, and. Um, I just didn't really know myself fully. I was still, I was still so young, and I kind of was just a little bit oblivious. Just went with it, and everything was new to me. Everything was new because it was my first job, so it was all an experience. So I didn't really have anything to compare it on. And then when I left the ship and I'd kind of had all of that experience, that was when it started hitting me, you know. And it was like, oh gosh, this isn't as easy as I thought. Getting a job straight out of college. It was great, brilliant, yes, I've done it, I've done it. And then when you leave and you're like, oh, it's not actually gonna be like this for my whole, <laughs> my whole career. And um, you learn the hard way, but it's important. You can learn just as much, or if not more, when you're not in work. After We Were Rock You, you yeah. then came back to the UK mm -hmm. and you went up to Manchester to do hair. Yes, at I the did. home of the theatre. I did. What was that like? Well, no one really knew what that theatre would turn into, you know, the kind of reputation that theatre would have now. And we went in doing hair and we rehearsed in this incredible, like, kind of, like, warehouse building. We had, like, loads of pictures of kind of Woodstock and, and all of these kind of... And we had, like, scented sticks kind of, like, burning whilst we were rehearsing and stuff. It was really, it was really cool. I played Burger in that and, and it was a crazy character. And it, when I look back, I think... Oh yeah, I do that differently now, but oh really? Yeah, I think with everything, yeah. everything you kind of you're your worst, your own worst critic, aren't you? So you've got really good responses. I think it was Lynn Gardner said you exude camp charisma. Oh wow! In a good way. That's lovely. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, I love, I love that. Just so like Mary Poppins. Yeah. Second cover birth. So we went to Zurich, and then Dubai, and I played the Adonis character, so one of like the more featured dancer roles. And again, I just come from playing Galileo and then did Burger, so it was very much like rock, rock singing. It was in my mind like, I really want to do a dance job so bad, and then I got this. It's a beautiful thing, the 25th anniversary production yes. at Above the Stack. Mm -hmm. So that was completely different from anything you've done before. This yeah. was your first role as an actor. Yes, yeah, it was. So Stephen Dexter, the director, really took me under his wing and, and really helped me. And, with this production and gave me the confidence to kind of make me feel like an actor now. I remember watching as a 14 year old the, the film version and I came out being gay at 15 to, to my family and everyone. So I remember watching that and just thinking, oh, like this is, yeah, I'm not the only kind of 14 year old who's gay, you know, because at the time you d I, I didn't really know what gay was, I don't think. I kind of just felt different. Um, not in a bad way, I was, I was very lucky with how I was brought up and at school, I was never bullied or anything like that and uh, my family were always so ca caring and open with anything in life really um, but you as a 14 year old feeling very different to everyone else, you do some, somehow feel different and secluded and um, in, in your mind and it was something that I kept a secret for a long time because I knew from a really really young age actually and <clears throat> and and yeah but I didn't want to hide it from my family anymore and that film Beautiful Thing was something that really helped me and made it realize me realize that it's actually okay you know uh, so thanks to Jonathan Harvey for writing that and it was quite an exciting production because it was the first one in Above the Stag's new, brand new space <laughs> Yeah. So how did that feel? What was it like to be the first ones in those dressing rooms? In my opinion, I think it's one of the most beautiful off the stag venues, really, it, it, I think. Uh, it's what I love about Above the Stag, that we, uh, it's not, I'm, I'm not saying this in a cheesy way, it is like a family. You are literally like a family in that building. 
uh, from the creative team to Peter Vaughan, who's the artistic director, to the, the, the cast. You always come together uh, in, in moments, you know, and, and you just make it work. And, and I just love, I, to this day, it's my favourite place to work because I just love them, you know, I really love them. And I just, it, I feel very happy working there. Really happy. I think people's opinions when you just hear Grind of the Opera, even mine before I knew what it was, you know, it was, oh, it's going to just be like a comedy show with that side of things. But it's got a real lovely heart to it and a real nice sentiment to it. And I think it touches a lot of the LGBTQ community um, because there's some really lovely moments in there where you can connect to it and, and feel like it's pers personal in a way. And again, this was like Battle of Hell. It was a production that had been on before and mm -hmm. been successful mm -hmm. and been well received. And then you were coming in to yeah. a pre-existing cast who have already kind of worked and gelled. Yeah, yeah. Had you seen the show before? I did, yeah. Did you? It was the second it was the second show in the in the new in the new building. So I was doing Beautiful Thing whilst they were rehearsing. I remember hearing Christian Lund's voice who plays the title role of Grinder. Um, I remember hearing this song called Wonderlust in my changing room when when I was getting changed for the show and he was singing it and I was like, Who is this person? His range is like <laughs> somewhere in Mars, mind blown by that, that voice talent, yeah. And you won a Off West End Award for Best Musical. Yes, we did. We won that. In How our... did that feel? So you were on stage when the awards were actually taking place? Did... Yeah. And then in our interval, we just like scrolled through Twitter <laughs> and we're like, oh, <laughs> we just won an Offie. <laughs> I don't think anybody, because you were up against some big hitters, you were up against six. Mm -hmm. which I think everybody in the room kind of thought we're going to mm. run away with. Even me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, that must be yeah. quite a surprise and an honour. Uh, it was a real honour, you know, and it's really nice that, that this theatre has been recognised with, with something. I think they really deserve it, all the work they do for the LGBTQ community. Now you've got acting roles, singing roles and dance roles under your belt. Mm -hmm. What type of things do you want to do in the future? I would really like to go to TV uh, eventually. And, I'd love to stick with my musical theatre as well. I want to do both. I want to just do what I enjoy doing and roles that I enjoy doing. And who inspires you? Who inspires me? Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. There's so many people. Oh, I know who inspires me. Musical theatre inspiration. Yeah. Oliver Thompson. Really? Honestly. Oh, I saw him um, at a train station, like, I think about Which is five months ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Um, He's incredibly tall, isn't he? Incredibly tall and incredibly talented and he was the kind of person when, uh, when I was at college and I saw him in Rock of Ages, oh and, and we were rocky actually, and um, he was just out of this, out of this world. He's a massive inspiration. I remember just watching him on YouTube and trying to copy his voice. <laughs> so was that before you then played Galileo? It yeah, it was. Wow. Yeah, so I watched it. I think it was 2014 production that he was in. I could be wrong. Uh, and I played Galileo in 2015 on the ship when it transferred over into the ship. Yeah. What was that like? Did that feel like... I am Oliver Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I could say I am Oliver Thompson because that man's voice. Um, but it, I did look at a lot of his videos yeah. <laughs> of the role. Shall we test your lyric skills? Oh gosh. How okay. good is your memory? Probably awful. Oh, oh well, 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 let's awful. find out. Father wears his Sunday best. Our house. Oh, baggy. this in baggy trousers. No, our house. In our house. In First the baggy song. trousers song, right? Not a clue. I do. Mother's tired. She needs a rest. Told you my lyrics are bad. We'll raise a glass and sip a drop of schnapps. I've sung that in my life. Yes, we'll put it on the roof. No, not a clue. <laughs> In honour of the great But you have to sing it, because I can do it with the tune. Oh, Charlotte Wakefield didn't need me to sing it. Now as the ladder of life has been strung. Now as the ladder of life has been strung. Not a clue. No, not a clue. No, not a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite good at choreography. Just like the angel that fell. 
banished from heaven to hell, or heaven from hell? No, just like the angel and from banished from, banished from, <laughs> banished forever to hell. There we go. Oh, that's right. Oh, you can have half of mine. I want to break free from your lies. Um, you're so self satisfied, I don't need you. Yes! Well oh. done! That. That's uh, Ollie Tonset coming back for you there. <laughs> <laughs> and through the nightmares should be over. Some of the terrors are still intact. Some yes! It's slightly easier, I only did it about you a month ago. You only did it two months ago, exactly. <laughs> okay, this one could be more of a challenge. Oh, what a tangled mess of men. Oh, it's just in tangled web, isn't it? No, this is the moment I... You always get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know this? This is my secret. <laughs> you knew I oohed an ad. Tangledness of men. Oh, say it again. I don't know. I, couldn't. I clearly oohed an ad in that section. <laughs> Connecting once and never again. Yes, I knew that. I knew that. You didn't. I did know that. I did, promise did, you, did, I'm down. on the spot. I'm right. on the spot. I knew that. I do sing that. One more. I don't expect the moon on these gay hookup apps. I don't expect the moon on these gay hookup apps. But I've got the afternoon. If you've got Google Maps. Yes! Come and play. That's what we Done. Go. Appearing at Grind of the Opera to the 23rd of February. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> been Ryan Anderson. Thank you for watching. Thank you. If you'd like to follow him on Twitter. It's uh, at Ryan underscore Anders, so that's A-N-D-E-R-S 95. And if you'd like to follow him on Instagram. It's at Ryan underscore Anderson, that's A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N 95. Coming up next time on That Stage Your Blog Meets. I'm now we're joined by Princeton. Hey, hey Princeton. Hey. How are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. I'm oh, loving your you. jumper. Thank you very much. My mom got me it. <laughs>